In the beginning, man walked in a straight line. It was the quickest way from here to there, wherever there was. Then one day, politics were invented, and man began going in circles. And years later, when he became tired, man decided to ride atop painted horses that travel in circles. Some of those horses went up, and then down, and then up, and then down. This is their story. This right here is proof that going in circles isn't always a bad thing. In the realm of the carnival carousel, going in circles is a good thing. Mark Bruther, chief curator at the Henry Ford, took me to the merry-go-round in Greenfield Village, where you get a sage life reminder to enjoy the ride. There's a kind of pointlessness about it, but there's a kind of charm about it. Nobody gets on a carousel expecting necessarily to accomplish anything. This is almost like a metaphor for aimlessness. I mean, we're going in circles, but you, there's a kind of honesty about that. You don't get on this expecting to, you know, fly to the moon. The broad appeal of the carousel started in the late 1800s. This particular carousel was made in 1913 by the Herschel Spillman Company out of New York, and it charmed crowds in both California and Washington State. It became operational at Greenfield Village in 1974. The original function of the carousel is somewhat surprising. Not quite the fanciful entertainment wheels of today. They really first come around to do with cavalry, to do with training. It was a practical thing. Carousels weren't designed to be playthings. They were more designed to be practical training apparatus. So soldiers in training would would sit atop these mm -hmm. fake horses. Right. Perhaps with a sword, perhaps trying to get a, a brass ring. Uh, it was all about being dexterous, being able to ride and fight at the same time. You know. When I was growing up, especially the animals that went up and down, that seemed awfully sophisticated. I can only imagine what, how it seemed to people in 1913. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Certainly at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, a ride on something like this would probably be more akin to what we'd expect nowadays on a really high-tech roller coaster. This was a kind of visceral, interesting, fast-paced uh, fast kind of entertainment. Meticulously designed, delicate relief work complements the artistically adorned animals. Think of it as mechanics meets imagination. It's powered by an electric motor, but then it's completely covered in lights. There's mirrors, there's these faceted sort of plastic gems. It's spectacular. It was designed to be bright and sparkling. A necessary musical accent was one of the carousel's most central and important features, the organ. The music that would be played on the band organ would be loud, it would be rhythmic. It's part of that uplifting, sort of motion-based sort of feel that you're gonna have in an unruly environment like a carnival or a circus or a fairground. Music, I think, is a fundamental component to being fun on the carousel. I like the giraffe. The giraffe? the giraffe is terrific. Uh, the giraffe's got a lot of character. You know, a giraffe can't cough. I did not know that. Yeah, it's like kind of ironic. Oh, I like the tiger. Tigers don't just have striped fur, they have striped skin underneath. That doesn't surprise me. I like the zebra. No two zebras have the same stripes. I couldn't wait any longer. It was time to take a spin and to suspend reality. All right, yeah, let's go. Now that's a zebra. We are, oh my gosh, I love this. It's got a good undulating It's like, it's like being on the Serengeti. <laughs> exactly like that, yeah. 